In this episode, we're going to take a side trip, sort of, and look at the guy who is behind the Textus Receptus. His name is Erasmus, and because there is so much ignorance among the KGV-only people, I thought I'd use as my example something that you can look up in Wikipedia. Now, not all, you know, it's not always true that Wikipedia has good entries. But here it's decent enough. And I would beg you to read it and consider what is said here because it's basically in favor of Erasmus. And, you know, since you guys are all hot on the Texas Receptus, which you shouldn't be, but you're going to see why in a few minutes. Since you're all hot on it, this is the guy who compiled it. So you ought to know something about him. Okay? Um, the point that I want to make here about Erasmus is that he was, a, he was part of the Reformation. And the other thing about him, and you can read through this, is that it was his goal, and you'll see this down here when it starts going through his, his history, okay? His goal was to do what Tregellis would later do in the 1800s. He wanted to get his hands on every uh, outstanding Greek text he could. But because he lacked money, he could only get about, you know, half a dozen of the late Byzantine manuscripts that were close to him and, you know, in time. So what he tried to do with what he had was to publish or compile a New Testament. And as you'll see here on the right hand side here, see, see where this is, see the picture on the right? Um, what he did was is he created a Greek New Testament, he called it the New Testament, which is kind of presumptuous because he's, he basically created some of the text. Um, but he was trying to show it in left hand side in Greek and in the right hand side in the Latin. And the idea was to show the reader, because a lot of people could read Greek in those days, what he came up with and then on the right hand side the Latin which was basically taken from the Vulgate. Now what you need to understand about your Textus Receptus is that it's, ba it's Erasmus's text and he didn't have a whole New Testament to work with because it was too expensive for him to try to acquire it. So what he did is when he didn't have Bible verses, he took the Latin Vulgate and translated it back into Greek and treated that as if it were, you know, on par with the original. I mean, he, he knew it wasn't on par and so did his readers, but he was trying to create a complete Greek copy and a complete Latin copy. You'll notice that at no time in doing that is he regarding it as inspired. What he was trying to do is just get it out because it was hard for people to get a hold of this kind of material. And so that's why he did what he did. He's never claiming that it's inspired. He's never claiming that what he did is inspired. And in fact, right here, see what I'm highlighting in blue? He's admitting that there are errors in the text. Okay, this is what you call your Textus Receptus. All right, it's Erasmus's text. And he invented, because he was trying to get See, it says here, Erasmus also translated the Latin text into Greek whenever he found that the Greek text were mixed up. Or he simply preferred it. So some of that Textus Receptus is not at all Bible. It's Erasmus's trying to create the text because he lacked it. Okay? So there is no way you can say that the Textus Receptus is inspired. Erasmus isn't saying it. He's admitting error right here. There were a lot of errors. You can read further down here. Okay. They were late Greek manuscripts of the Byzantine text family, and only a few of them, because the Byzantine textual family is very numerous, and there are a lot of variations within that family. Okay. Because the people made copies. You do. You couldn't go to a copier in the, you know the the early days. You had to create a copy by hand. And so, of course, there's going to be errors. 
All right, and in the other episode, you'll see me explain how errors are in the text and how you can tell what they are. And it's really not very hard, and it's kind of fun. But the point is, is I just want to eliminate right now the ignorance that claims that the KJV is based on an inspired text. It's not. It's based on Erasmus's text. And Erasmus did a pretty good job of back translating, you know, the Vulgate into Greek. Where he where he had to. It's not all of it. Some of it's genuine Bible, but not all of it. So it cannot be said to be inspired, because Erasmus is using the Latin Vulgate, which itself is a translation from the original Greek. So only to the extent that the Vulgate was correct in its translation, and only to the extent that Erasmus correctly translated it back. See, this is the the entry for the Vulgate. All right, so you can look that up. Only to the extent that the translation was accurate, okay, from between Vulgate and Erasmus, is there going to be some kind of reflection of the original? But it is never going to be the original, okay? So you cannot call it inspired. You just can't. Because the Vulgate wasn't inspired. And he's translating from the Vulgate. Plus, again, he admits he had errors, all right? And if you read through the article, you'll find out that there were lots and lots of errors. And they had to spend a lot of time trying to fix it. Okay? And the rest of this goes through his history. Now, that's the first thing about Erasmus I want you to know. Is that there were errors that he knew about. So, obviously, the Holy Spirit didn't inspire it. doesn't mean that, the Holy, you know, that he never used 1 John 1, 9. But it does mean it's not perfect. And it's also not perfect because he didn't have a whole Bible to work with. So he had to create what he thought was something like the Greek. Okay? Now the other thing I want you to notice about this guy is his own beliefs. Um, when you have a claim that the KGV only people make, that the text of their you know, the original text of their KGV is inspired by God in some miraculous way, then it stands to reason that the person who got that would actually understand the Bible itself. If he got the inspired text, then he should be able to read it if he can write it. Okay, well, our dear boy here, Erasmus, couldn't read it very well. All right, he might have had a translator skill, all right, but in terms of understanding the the Bible that he wrote, he didn't understand it very well. And how do how come I can say such a thing? Because the guy was a Catholic. All right, he was a Catholic. He disagreed. He started out liking Luther because he thought it was freedom. Okay, but he disagreed with Luther, and in fact, he was very much into. Okay, the reality of the body of Christ after consecration in the Eucharist. He believed in transubstantiation. You can't read Bible and believe in it anymore. In fact, you can't read the Bible, really read it, especially if you could read it in the Greek, and never be a Catholic afterwards. You have to be a liar. Okay? Or you have to be really stupid about Scripture. In other words, you're reading it, but it, you're out of the Spirit, and you can't understand squat. This guy did not understand the book that he translated. This guy did not understand the book he compiled or he would not have remained a Catholic. Okay, therefore he was not inspired by the Holy Spirit in his compilation. It's not possible. Because his beliefs would have to change. And here's how you know. When Paul wrote the books Paul wrote, he understood what he was writing. He believed in what he was writing. And what he was writing is totally antithetical to Catholicism. Okay, and every single count. So Erasmus, for all of his human genius with language, and he did have human genius, it's, it's pretty obvious, okay, he didn't understand the Bible because he's an ecclesiast. He remained a Catholic. So it is not possible that he was inspired. It's possible to use 1 John 1, 9 at times, but so long as he remained a Catholic, that, that arrested his spiritual development. So he did not get inspired writ. You had to be spiritually mature to get it. That's why so many of the writers of the Bible 
um, you don't see their books until at the end of their lives because they had to be spiritually mature to write perfect divine writ. So Erasmus was not among them, okay? And Erasmus compilation was not entirely of the Bible. Okay, now we're going to look at something else about Erasmus that's going to kind of clinch this. And I really feel bad about doing this, but I have to. Okay. 